island of Driftmark plays a unique and important role in the Dance of the Dragons and the history of Westeros up until the end of the bloody Civil War. It still functions as an important trading port and is the home of House Valarian, but not as vital as it was during the early era of Targaryen rule. But the question we want to look at during this video is what led to Driftmark being such an important location in the Dance of the Dragons when places such as Dragonstone and King's Landing lie in such close proximity. Foremost, it is imperative that we understand the background of the island and how it and House Valarian rose to prominence. Driftmark is an island slightly west of Dragonstone in Blackwater Bay. So close in fact you can make the journey there from Dragonstone in a very short time. It's the seat of House Valarian and technically part of the Crown Lands with the banner pledged to the Lord of Dragonstone. In terms of geography, Driftmark is different from its neighbouring Dragonstone, low-lying and fertile, making it perfect for farming and civilization in the form of cities and villages. Its name comes from the large amount of driftwood brought by the tides of the narrow sea. By the time of the Dance of the Dragons, Driftmark had two key castles, one older, named after the island itself, Castle Driftmark, and High Tide, a newer castle, built to replace the near ruin the Castle Driftmark was becoming. Castle Driftmark is a grim-looking castle, damp and flooded, with its walls stained with sea salt. This is in contrast with the other newer castle, High Tide. High Tide became famous for being the seat of the sea snake, Lord Corlys Valarium, who in his youth became one of the richest and most powerful lords in Westeros, even richer than House Lannister and the crown itself. His wealth came from treasures he brought back from Essos during his famous voyages around the world. Corlys constructed High Tide to replace the damp and overcrowded ancestral seat of House Valarian. Castle Driftmark, giving House Valarian a seat to be proud of, constructing the castle out of the same pale stone used to construct the Eyrie in the Vale of Arum. Key towns on the island include Hull and Spicetown, among numerous shipyards. The large fishing village of Spicetown sits in the shadow of the new castle High Tide, due to its location on the island and the island's position in the middle of the narrow sea. Spice attracts attention of much of the trade that would elsewise have headed to the mainland, notably spices. Thus, the name. When you visit the docks of Spice Town, you will see it crowded with ships from all the three cities and beyond. But other than the strategic location and the importance of Driftmark as a trading post, why did it become a flashpoint and so important in the Dance of the Dragons? Well, there is one simple answer. House Valarian, specifically Corlys Valarian, the Sea Snake. House Valarian descends from Valyria, possessing similar Valyrian features to those of House Targaryen, notably pale skin, silver hair, and violet eyes. They first settled the island of Driftmark before Aegon's conquest and the arrival of the Targaryens at Dragonstone before the Doom of Valyria. As a result, both House, Targaryen and Valyrian, have close ties with many marriages between the two, prior to and after Aegon's conquest. Traditionally, the Lords of the Tides would serve as master of ships on the small council, with every master of ships being from House Valyrian until Daemon Valyrian acted as Hand of the King from 50 to 54 AC under Jaehaerys. Due to this association with being master of ships, much of the royal fleet was made up of Valyrian ships, and that would prove to play a key role in the Dance of the Dragons. Driftmark would play a huge role throughout history before the dance. Most notably, Queen Alyssa Valyrian fled there with her children after the death of her husband, King Aenys, when his brother Maegor crowned himself king. At Driftmark, she crowned her own son, Prince Aegon King. But what truly sets Driftmark down the path it's on during the modern era was simply a marriage and a death. King Jaehaerys married his granddaughter, Princess Rhaenys, the daughter of his eldest son, Aemon, to Corlys Valarium. When Aemon, the king's heir, died young, it left the question of succession. Some supported Rhaenys as the heir's eldest and only child. However, some felt that the king's next eldest son, Balon, was better suited to be king. Rhaenys was passed over in favour of Balon, with Rhaenys and Corlys left feeling she had been robbed of her birthright based on her gender alone. When Balon himself died young, the question of succession came up again, with the two primary claims being made by Balon's eldest son, Viserys, and Princess Rhaenys. When the Great Council of 101 sided with Viserys over Rhaenys and her children by Corlys, this left both vexed and angry. The whole idea of Rhaenyra Viserys' eldest child and acknowledged heir, marrying Lainor Valarian, Corlys and Rhaenys' son, was to make peace with House Valarian and bring the two rival claims together and fix the damages of the past. But this would all prove for nothing with the birth of Viserys' first son, Aegon, 
and his future children by Alicent Hightower will complicate matters even further and render all the peace building done by the marriage redundant and ultimately lead to the conflict between the Blacks and the Greens. Key events in the build up to the conflict would take place on Driftmark, such as Eamon losing his eye. Ultimately, Driftmark gave Queen Rhaenyra, Corlys and the Blacks control of the Royal Fleet and thus Blackwater Bay. Though they did not hold the capital and the Iron Throne itself, having the power to block all trade entering the city and the trading power of Driftmark itself put extreme economical pressure on Aegon and the Greens. In my view, it is no coincidence that once Driftmark did eventually fall and was sacked, that once Rhaenyra left Dragonstone, that she slowly started to lose control of the war. She no longer had the power and defence that Driftmark offered her. So why was Driftmark so vital for Rhaenyra? Well, simply, he gave her control of the narrow sea and gave her a way to cripple Aegon. If the war had dragged on into winter proper, Aegon would have been put under extreme pressure, more so than he already was. But it also gave a stable base of operations alongside Dragonstone. When Driftmark fell, so did things start to crumble for Rhaenyra, despite the capture of the Iron Throne. Ultimately, Driftmark would never recover fully from its fall, and House of Lyon in many ways would fall into irrelevancy. But for a short while, the salt-stained island in the narrow sea was the centre of trade and the most powerful military asset in the Seven Kingdoms.